Silent Warrior Foundation is here again. Whiskey and War Stories 2021, Operation Eagle Claw. This time we're interviewing Glenn Nickel, Delta operator that was involved with the mission and at Desert One. Nick, can you tell me what's the, in your opinion, the most little known fact about Operation Eagle Claw? Well, I would say uh, the complexity of the operation, uh, people know about that just uh, in hindsight, but at the time, uh, people didn't appreciate it, and how all the units that had, uh, were brought into it, uh, everybody had to retool themselves for the mission. Uh, Delta, we weren't designed for a wartime footing. You know, we were a permissive counterterrorism unit that was going to go into a country that was going to let us in. Uh, we did not even have any 5.56 five, rifles at the team level because we were counterterrorism, so we had 9 millimeter and 45. So now we had to retool and learn how to do close quarter combat hostage rescue with 556. Five, Today is standard practice, but back then we had to invent that. That's just one of many inventions that everybody had to overcome. Uh, General Schumacher, who was on the mission uh, as a major at the time, uh, he coined this phrase, the most successful failure, just because of how many obstacles, how many victories, how many innovative techniques were developed to do the mission in a short period of time. And that uh, because we couldn't stay together, the chairman wouldn't let us uh, work together uh, for operation security, everybody was like an all-star team. Instead of having a pro team, all knowing each other's playbooks, would all develop our playbooks independently, come back and find out that some meshed, some didn't mesh, so we'd have to retool ourselves again and then go back and try again and come back each time. It was like all-star teams coming back in again and again, each time at a different and a better level. But it was always that discovery learning of who we were and how we'd work together. Is, is there a single memory that stands out more than any other of your experience during Eagle Claw? Uh, during the mission, uh, the most memorable one was um, on the uh, C-130, I was in the C-130 when it, uh, the helicopter crashed into us. As we're getting up to get out, uh, the loadmaster in back, J.J. Byers, ran past us to go up to the cockpit because those were his friends up in there. And uh, at the end, uh, Paul, our, everybody was out. Our last guy to get out was Paul Lawrence. He heard this faint call for help, looked up front, and there's J.J. Byers coming out of the front. Um, literally smoking and Paul ran up and helped get him to the back of the aircraft and Paul t told him when I jump you jump well I, that's when the fuel bladders blew up and actually blew them both out of the aircraft so I ran up to uh, we saw two people get blown out first one I got to was JJ Byers and as myself and Keith and uh, Tom Corbett were carrying him off to the next airplane I have his head cradled in my chest and my arms underneath him and literally he, he's just smoking and I'm looking at his hands uh, he had his hands raised like this and I thought wow his Nomex gloves burned off his uh, hands that was actually the skin off the bones he lost all that in his effort to get his buddies out uh, and the only way we kept him alive was uh, literally just getting into his head just because I had nothing to work with it was just convincing him to live and he had, he had become a single parent of five girls six months before the mission because his wife left him. And so that's what he had to live for, and that's how he survived.